Welcome to Lecture Online, and here our next example is almost exactly like the previous example, but in this case we have the wind blowing the opposite direction. So what's happening here is we have a source moving at 20 meters per second from left to right. We have an observer who's walking towards the source. The source puts out the frequency of 500 hertz. What does the observer hear? At the same time, there's a wind blowing in the direction of right to left, so blowing against the sound waves coming from the source, and how will that affect the frequency heard by this observer? Well, in essence, what that does, it actually causes the velocity of the sound to slow down by this amount. Normally, the speed of sound at room temperature in wind still condition is 340 meters per second, but if the whole medium through which the sound travels is moving to the left, it has the effect of slowing down the velocity of sound. So what that does then is you'll hear a different frequency according to this equation. So frequency observed is equal to frequency of the, of the uh, not the observer, but the, the source times the equation of uh, velocity of sound in air divided by velocity of sound in air plus or minus the velocity of the observer plus or minus the velocity of the source. But over here, what do we need? We need the velocity of the wind and in this case it's going to be minus the velocity of the wind minus the velocity of the wind because in essence it has the effect of slowing down the sound waves by moving the whole medium to the left so the sound waves will take longer to get there so the effect then is if we plug in the numbers 500 hertz for the source times 340 minus 10 340 minus 10, which is kind of the new effective velocity of sound. And now we have the velocity of the observer, which is 5 meters per second, the velocity of the source, which is 20 meters per second. And again, we have to determine, uh, have to determine if these are going to be plus or minuses. And the way we do that is looking at the effect. If the observer is moving towards the source, it has the effect of bringing the waves closer together because they don't want to take as long for the next wave to get to the observer as the observer is moving towards the sound, which means that the observer is going to hear a higher frequency. And since this number is a numerator, a higher frequency means that we have to have a plus there, a bigger number in the numerator to give you a higher frequency. The source is moving towards the right, which means as the waves are being put out, they're going to be closer together because when the next wave comes out, the source has moved a little bit, so the waves will therefore be causing be caused to be closer together. When the observer hears those closer waves, the observer then will hear a higher frequency. But since the number is in the denominator, the velocity of the source, then what sign do we need here to make this overall fraction a bigger number because we're expecting higher frequency, which means a smaller number in the denominator, which means we have to have a minus there. Now we're ready to do the calculation. So 340 minus 10 is 330 plus 5 is 335 divided by 340 minus 10 is 330 minus 20 is 310. So divided by 310 and then we multiply the times 500 and we get 540.3 oh, hertz. So this is 540.3 hertz. So we end up hearing a higher frequency. Now, what would happen if the wind wasn't there? Then we'd get 340 plus 5, 340 minus 20. So let's try that. 345 divided by 320, multiplied times 500, and we would get 539.1. So 539.1 hertz uh, without wind, if there was wind still, as a comparison. So you can see, by the wind blowing in the opposite direction, it has the effect of the observer hearing a higher frequency. And that's how you do a problem like that.